So Pastor Nate just did a, a great job explaining to us scripturally why small groups, what's so important about small groups. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> over the past couple of years, there's been quite a few pastors that have come through Calvary and, and uh, have kind of used different terminology for this, and including myself, right? We, we were talking and calling them community groups just a little while ago, and and uh, they just have not been able to kick off the way they should and how important that they are. And so it's one of the reasons why we went searching and we hired Pastor Nate. And so uh, we decided that it would be a really good thing for us to maybe use kind of a question and answer thing to answer some of your questions. And what is the terminology or what does this all mean? Why, why are we calling them what we call and, and what's the purpose? It's kind of like a um, you know, I called it a three-spoke thing in the, it, in the first service, but it's really kind of a four-spoke thing because there's also a personal devotion time that's a part of this wheel of walking and riding in this life with Christ. And so, um, so I guess the question that, that we need to start out with very, you know, openly is, Pastor Nate, what are small groups? What does that term small group mean? Yeah, so great. So small groups, they're meant for mentorship. They're meant for mentorship, whether that mentorship is through uh, spiritual study together, scriptural study together, or through fellowshipping with one another. Small groups are also not just your friends. Are, it's, it's building relationships with new people. And another thing, at least from a church standpoint, small groups are also registered. Every single small group that you see out there has been registered through our church. And that does two things for us. Number one, it helps us as a church help disciple, mentor, and just come alongside leaders. It's, it's, it's great for us to see who the leaders are so that weekly we can reach out and say, hey, how was, how was the group on Monday night? Can you tell me a win from that? Anything I can help with? Another thing with that too is the church provides the curriculum. The church is paying for the curriculum of small groups. And also, it's a great way to kind of gauge the health of our church. How well are we as a church meeting together outside of this church? How much are we doing life together? Awesome, awesome. So when, when we're talking these small groups, is this a you know, lifelong commitment or what, what kind of, you know, what's the duration what you would consider a small group when the small group meets? Yeah, so our small groups fall within a semester, quote unquote. Uh, so think about kind of like school, you have different semesters. Each semester ranges about max 12 weeks long. And small groups though are six to eight weeks long. And they max 10 weeks. You have to have a really special uh, exemption for 10 weeks, but six to eight weeks long. So, so within that 12 weeks, the group will get together for about six to eight weeks, and then 12 weeks later, we'll have another semester. And Yep, we'll have another and, expo, another semester, and, and correct. And, and look at more small groups. Awesome. Yep. So as, as we step into these and, and we do these small groups, you know, you, you mentioned curriculum, you mentioned, you know, you know, uh, just getting together. What, what's the difference there? What do you mean by that? And so what's the content of a small group? What's that do? Great question. So content for small groups, it could be a Bible study. It could be a, a book study. It could be a study of a specific book in the Bible. It could be a video series that some other pastor has done. Or it could be just fellowshipping with one another. It could be eating bread together. It could be grilling out. It could be watching college football, NFL football. There's actually a small group out there for a primetime football games, just getting together for that. The one thing, the one thing, church, that is required of all of our small groups is that we pray for one another, that we pray for one another. It's just like that story I was telling. Jesus is our intercessor. He is the high priest. He is the one that we go to in prayer. He is the one that we're, we give our concerns, our praises, and our needs to. And so we as a group, as a church, in these small groups, we will pray for one another. Excellent, excellent. So then knowing that, knowing you know, what we actually do, what would you consider to be the ultimate goal of that, that term, small group? Yeah, the ultimate goal for us as a church through small groups is to grow closer to Christ. It's part of that discipleship process, sanctification, becoming more like our Lord and Savior. We have some smaller goals underneath the overarching goal because ultimately we want to grow closer to Christ. So smaller goals, number one, as our church grows, you'll see more and more faces here that you, you don't recognize. And small groups are a great way for us through semester base to get connected to other people, get to connected to new faces and be able to really see and meet more people. Another goal of small groups is helping you guys find your niche of people. 
those people that you do life together, that you have a life group with. Okay, now you just threw out another term. I did. Right? Yep. So, so small group is this kind of, you, you, you go to this one this time, you might go to this one this next time, and, and you kind of move around a little bit so that you get the opportunity to meet more and more people mm -hmm. and connect with more and more people. But then you threw out the word life group. So we got small group, life group. What does life group mean? Why, what, what's the difference? Yeah, life group, I had actually never heard the term life group until I came here. And I remember my very first sermon I ever preached at this church. I remember asking the question, so how many of you, how many of you in the church are connected in a small group? And I remember 70, 80% of the congregation raised their hand and I was just so confused. I was mind blown. I was like, no, it's not true. Uh, Cause I had literally gone to every single small group that we had available. I sat through, sat through them that were registered through the church. And it became very apparent soon that a lot of the people raising their hands, they were part of this thing called a life group. These are people who probably started in a small group and now are a life group. They're doing life with one another. And life groups themselves, they're pretty closed. Uh, small groups are open, life groups are closed. Why are they closed? Because it takes time to build rapport, relationships with people where there's a trust there. And a lot of people in this church who are part of a life group, they, they have these people in their life groups that they might reach out to when they have a praise when something happened, they, they, those people in their life group may be some of the first people they reach out to. Same thing happens when something not so great is happening. They may be some of the first people they reach out to. Uh, those are your best friends. And so, uh, yeah, that's... So these <clears throat> life groups, these are good things, right? We, Absolutely. That, that's something yep. we want to see happen. It's important. That yep. part, yep. That's part, it's one of the spokes in the wheel. Um, and even a small group could... Possibly, you know, if, if you get together those first six to eight weeks and ever, there's like great connection with everybody, mm -hmm. that could turn into a life group, right? Absolutely. And, yep. and so that might happen. So when we do this and we have it, what, when you see a life group then, what is the, what kind of what's the call to a life group? You know, are, mm -hmm. are we asking them, look, you need to disband or you need to stop meeting? What, what are you asking of a life group? Yeah, we will never ask any life group to disband, to stop meeting. That's where we want you guys to be. We want you guys walking in the faith together with other Christians. That's the goal. The call that we have as a church for those in life groups is, I know a lot of people who are in life groups, and a lot of those who are in life groups are amazing leaders. They're amazing disciples of men and women. And our call to you is just to pray and consider possibly leading a small group or taking part in a small group. Taking the next step of leading the discipleship for the next generation, these next core people going through our church. So basically, it'd be okay to do both. It would be very okay to do both. <laughs> um, and maybe, you know, because the one, you, you stick with this group of people and you know them really well. This one, you get to meet newer people and you get to connect with new people so that as we come in on a Sunday, you see a face and you're like, hey, I know this person and I can talk to them. And, and, and most of you can probably remember their name I won't, because you've all experienced that from me before, where I look and I go, what's your name again? I'm not good at that. But, but it's a good way to do it, right? And to, to connect with new people. Absolutely. Is, is the small group. So, all right. So, I can't commit to a small group. What, what do you, how do you answer that question? Can't commit to a small group. Well, I will say, uh, before we jump into the next, oh, the next thing. I messed up. I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're good. It's is that this, other term. Yeah, we have another term called discipleship groups. And discipleship groups are uh, continuous groups that happen in the church that are 100% about discipleship. Every time they meet, they're going to be studying scripture together, encouraging one another, maybe even correcting one another, and pushing each other closer to Christ. And we have three different types of discipleship groups. So some of you guys may get the, the, the uh, emails about like the Band of Brothers, Joy in the Morning, our Wednesday discipleship group that, that'll happen during Iwana in the, in the school year. Uh, those won't be part of Small Group Expo because they're discipleship groups. They're always going, they're always open. Uh, so that's what a discipleship group is. So we have three different groups, small groups, life groups, and then discipleship groups. And so discipleship group, we don't have to sign up for. Nope. It's a, I, can, I can come this Monday, but I can't make it next Monday, but it's okay for me to come back the next Monday and I'll be able to connect. And it's, it's about digging deeper into the word basically on those three, those three groups that we have we're going right now. Yep, discipleship. you got it. Excellent, excellent. So, now I'll ask. So I can't commit to a small group. What, what, uh, how do we answer that? How do you say, what do you deal or talk to a person that says that to you? Yeah, so uh, 
I'm going to reiterate small groups again here because I remember growing up in a household had six kids and we all played sports. We were all involved in school and my parents still continually made an effort to go and lead a small group, to do a small group. And I remember before small group every single week, it almost be like a ah, little anxiety. Maybe it wasn't what they wanted to do. Maybe it was taking some energy, but every single week afterwards, I saw them so filled up and I got to spend time with other kids my age or a little bit younger or older. And we were hanging out during their small group as well. So it was a great time. But we do understand church that there will be seasons where it's, it's not possible for you to be in a small group or there's not a small group that fits your schedule. We understand it. And so if you can't make a small group, that's why we have this thing called discipleship group where you can just go and join at any time. Because there will be a time throughout that semester where you can go and join with other believers to be encouraged, to be discipled, to be maybe convicted in the spirit by the way you're living, uh, but ultimately to be encouraged. Excellent. So, so we're not saying this is an excuse not to join a small group, right? That is still a huge priority and, and something that we should step into. But for those moments where it's just not possible, here's the discipleship group that you can be a part of and, and step into and get connected. Yep. Um, exactly. Who knows? Maybe a small group comes out of your connection with a discipleship group kind mm -hmm. of thing. So, excellent. Yep. So, um, awesome. Well, hopefully that gave you some clarity on the difference between these three different spokes in the wheel. And then, of course, like we were saying at the beginning of that, there is that fourth spoke, your own personal relationship with Jesus, right? And, and studying God's Word on your own is also a big part of that.